Well, it's been about two months since I installed the BC Racing coilovers and Enki wheels and I've been driving it quite a bit since then. The suspension is actually really good, probably better than I was expecting it to be. Uh, it's pretty firm generally speaking on most of the settings um, but when you soften it right off to the softest setting on the dampers uh, it's livable, it's fine. Uh, the right height that I have it set at at the moment means that you know it's pretty reasonable, it's not scraping on the ground, there's no rubbing whatsoever um, and there's no issues. The way this thing corners on these coilovers is amazing, it is so much flatter I have to say it's, it's a big improvement. Uh, as well as these tyres did, did help because the tyres that were on previously were not great. However, the guy who sold me this car had said that one of his favourite aspects about the car was how it flowed when it was going down the, the road. It's quite soft suspension but it had a fluidity to it that matched the, the personality of the car. And at the time I thought, yeah I agree, it drives well. Uh, but it's just too much body roll for me and I, I wanted to improve the look of it. The wheels that came on the car at the time were these black five spoke um, wheels that I didn't like the look of. And I decided I'd go for aftermarket suspension in combination with light, wider tyres to transform the look of the car. I'm having second thoughts. I do think that some of that flow that the car used to have and the ease at which you were able to just forget about what road surfaces were going to be like. It drove like it was a bigger, more comfortable car. Very, very easy to, to live with. And I kind of missed that, if I'm honest. So my first thought was to put the standard suspension back onto this car. Take off the lowered suspension and leave these Enkies on it. But as many of you know, when you try to put aftermarket wheels, particularly when they're wider or have a more aggressive offset, onto a standard ride height car, any car, it just looks terrible. Uh, the huge arch gap just doesn't fit with kind of wide offset wheels. So then I went on the hunt for some wheels because I didn't like the wheels that were, the car came on. They weren't the original wheels. They fitted the car perfectly, but I just didn't like the look of them. Finding genuine wheels uh, for a Honda Beat is quite the challenge, as I found out. They were only available with two types of wheels. There was uh, steel wheels and there was Enki uh, pepper pot style wheels. So that's what I was after. I could only find one set for sale in Japan on Yahoo auctions and they were not in good condition. By the time they were shipped over, they're going to be incredibly expensive and I'd have to get them reconditioned. Uh, luckily, after a few weeks of searching on the Facebook UK Beat group, uh, somebody contacted me to say that they had a set of wheels they had already stripped them, ready to repowder coat them, but they decided to sell them. Getting parts at the moment from the UK is a lot more expensive than it used to be due to, to Brexit import duties and things like that. But I had a cunning plan. I was going over to the UK on holidays just a couple of weeks after that person contacted me. And it wasn't a huge distance away from where I would be staying. So I hatched a plan to go and meet him about two or three hours from where I was based and pick up the wheels and there was no space in the car but I was going to have to find some way to get it back to Ireland. As it drew closer to the holiday, the seller contacted me to say he had a stainless steel exhaust that he was also uh, wanted to sell. That is also one item that I've been considering buying but again buying parts from Japan is just very expensive. The existing exhaust is not in bad condition um, so I wasn't going to rush into that but this was a stainless exhaust that was going to be in the same location as the wheels were he was selling at a very reasonable price, so I just couldn't say no, so I picked that up as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the standard suspension again. I'm going to transfer some of these tyres onto the original Enki rims after I get them powder coated. But going back to the stock wheels, stock suspension actually does appeal to me. Maybe I'm getting old, but that softer ride, more compliance, not having to worry about rough roads or speed bumps or bottoming out. Uh, it just makes for a more carefree ownership. They're starting out something like this. A bit crusty, but not too bad. Most of the paint is now gone. 
and I will just treat it to get rid of any of the rust that I can't reach with the grinder and then paint it. For the paint I'll be using Aldi's finest metal care paint. Perfect. Yankee wheels and BC Racing suspension is now off and the stock suspension is back on. Before I put on the wheels, I am going to change the exhaust to this stainless unit. So they replaced at one point though. So yeah, I was worried about this. There's a kind of a donut on that, it's kind of a gasket. Yeah. And um, but it looks to be in good condition, so. So this is the old crusty one. This looks like it's been a section welded in but I've actually seen pictures of other people's beats and they all seem to have this larger diameter at that point but there's a weld along there which doesn't look too healthy also seems to have had a repair here I doubt that stock it's got that very sharp angle there diameter wise I don't think it's any different so I don't expect it's going to be much louder or add much more performance but we'll see it does get slightly thicker towards the tip here but that's probably not going to make a massive difference
the suspension and wheels are all on now so it's time to figure out if I've made a terrible mistake and should go back to the BC Racing coilovers or if the stock is better. Let's find out. taking it across some pretty bumpy roads now and it's definitely a big improvement it does have that flow back into it and I don't regret it at all something that did surprise me though is there's definitely a little bit more understeer introduced into it now I don't know whether it's because of that extra road or what the tires on the front are the same width as the other ones of train gone by The way it takes a set is just much more pleasing to drive. It rolls and then bites. There's definitely a lot of grip there and it's a more enjoyable drive. You don't need to be worried about, you know, holes or rutted roads or poor quality roads. So definitely glad I've made the switch. Just back from that first drive and definitely glad I made the switch back to the stock suspension. One thing I didn't comment on was the exhaust. So um, pretty much as I expected, the diameters of the pipes are pretty much the same. So it's no louder, it's just that it's stainless now. So I don't need to worry about rust in the future. So glad that all worked out as well. And while I was thinking about reverting back to stock, another item that was on my mind was the car mats in the interior. They have been replaced with just you know off the shelf ones from uh, motor factors and they look pretty bad to be honest um, a lot of the original mats at this point have been really badly worn if you find them for sale uh, second hand in japan they're not in great condition there is a guy in the states that is looking to replicate the exact same designs just like he's done the cloth for the interior seats and i'm sure they're going to be absolutely excellent um, he seems to, to have a real eye for detail, but they're going to be expensive, particularly the fact that I'd have to get them shipped from the US into Ireland and pay more tax and duties on it. So I started exploring other options and I'm currently talking with a company based in Europe that should be able to create a design similar but maybe not identical to the stock mats. So hopefully that works out.